Hey, hello everybody, this is Purge, and I'm bringing you guys a pro gameplay. It's going to be from uh, the Star Series, and it's going to be Infuse versus Gosu. I am here with Luminous. How are you? I am doing great. A little bit hungry for not eating lunch, but I'm excited to cast this game. Yeah, I've been casting so many Star Series games. I, it's like three plus games every yeah, single had day. Yeah, not had a have you? I, I'm like doing more pro casting than anybody right now. It's yeah. seriously, like, I cast every single day, stream for like six hours or something ridiculous, and here it is. Back for another game from the Star Series. I've been uploading so many on my YouTube channel. It's like all pro commentaries now. Because I've that's like my entire day. But either way, we're going to watch Infused versus Gosu. Infused played uh, yesterday, I believe. I can't remember who they got stomped by. Maybe it wasn't a stomp, but they I remember they lost the game. But it's Gosu, a bunch of American, or more North American players at least. I know Bulba is, North, is American. I think Universe might be Canadian. I can't remember. It's hard to tell between the two. Do you know anything about the two teams? Um... I am really good fans with, or really good friends with Waga. Uh, I know mm -hmm. they practice very hard, but hasn't really been uh, transitioning into their um, victories, I suppose. Waga has been complaining to me that they're waiting for a couple of heroes that have not been released in Dota 2, namely the Templar Assassin and Techies. Hmm. So they're queuing here really? pretty hard. Yeah, uh, they, they actually suit. play those two heroes legit. Uh, huh. Waga plays it, so um, I guess they're biding their time, and hopefully they're going to swing back. But today there won't be Templar Assassin or Techies, and uh, let's see what they're going to be cooking up for us. I can't wait for that. Temp not a, first of all, Techie's absolutely kind of a weird hero, generally considered to be easily counterable. But I mean, there's some hypothetical, especially with the Aghanim Scepter. Oh no, he 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 you know. just goes solo lane Techies and, and farm. Yeah, like crazy. yeah. If, if you go solo mid or something and you do like bottle crowing and uh, like soul ring bottle is amazing on Techies. You can actually do some cool things. But hasn't seen we haven't seen a lot of that in the pro games. But I I really feel like the meta game is so diverse now that that could be a possibility for sure. Like, I, I watched, you know, I've been casting so many games, and we see Morphling one game, Lifestealer another game, and then maybe we see an Anti-Mage, and some games there isn't a hard carry. It's like, it's really diverse right now, which is really fun. I think the only heroes that are really staples are Chen and Chant Bands. Those are the ones that are like, if you let them into the pool, it's, the game is over. You know, any team would pick them up, it seems like. Yeah, I like to, I like to think that it's going to remain like this, where we don't have a very stable metagame for the next couple of months, uh, simply because Valve is totally... You know, throwing out the equation out the window whenever we have a new hero being added to the pool. And these new heroes going to be added uh, very soon are, are the big heroes. We're talking about Lycanthrope, yeah. we're talking about Shadow Demon, that was recently added. We're talking about Silver a Chaos Knight Panda. These are going to throw the entire metagame wide open. So it, it's going to be like this for the next several months, I would say, leading up to the International. So it's going to be very, very exciting just to see how the metagame is going to shift. Yeah, I would agree as well. I'm really excited for that. And I'm also excited that you mentioned they want to play Templar Assassin, because that's a hero in Dota 1, in pubs at least, who never gets played. Mm -hmm. Never. But she actually has a lot of potential. I mean, there, she has seen occasional Dota 1 pro games uh, go for like a fast blink dagger. She's actually a pretty strong solo mid hero, and some of her abilities are actually really fun and really nice to use. So a little underused in Dota 1, or moderately underused, but definitely has potential. Um, in terms of Dota 2, so I, I'm excited to see something like that. But those heroes will come out eventually. Lycan also um, just added to the test server. I'll we'll probably play some pub games of that later today. But Shadow Demon should be in this version right now. So there should be a possible Shadow Demon ban or Shadow Demon pick. Most likely going to be a ban, but that first round bans, uh, they're, they're limited now. I mean, there's three added for, or is an extra ban for each team added, but you know, there's only so many heroes you can get rid of. So maybe we'll see Shadow Demon. What do you feel about the hero? Do you think it's going to make a big slash in, in the scene, or...? Uh, I, so I, w I, well, I've been telling people you will see him at some point, guaranteed. Right. He's, I mean, he's one of the strongest solos in the game. He can fit into a tri lane. He can do a support babysitting role. Dispersion, I think, is just too good not to play because it lets you set up things. You can do like a Shadow Demon bottom lane, you know? That alone allows you to land perfect arrows, um, at least from a decent range, like two and a half seconds arrow range away. But I, I think that he definitely will see play. I don't know if it'll be this game. I don't know if it's going to be later, but I, he was too good in in Dota 1, in my opinion, for him not to play. His ulti just scales so great late game, and so does uh, Soul Catcher. Just two amazing abilities that work all the way throughout the whole thing. Yeah, I'm not I'm not too sure whether I'm a big fan of Shadow Demon, especially in how he fits in the metagame, which I say he doesn't really fit well at all, because um, current metagame is all about really pushing. We see Chen in the pool, Furion's in the pool right now, and I don't know how he's going to stop a push. I mean, Poison Stack is okay in terms of doing that, but... Once there's you know billion creeps uh, in the field, it's gonna be really difficult to land a uh, good soul catcher, and we're gonna see Fury on Chen and Shadow Demon being left in the pool. So hmm. this is wide open. I have no idea what what these teams gonna go for. Yeah, and interesting that it was a 
Enchantress ban first. I think what its Gosu was trying to do there, ban the Enchantress, that allows them to possibly first pick the Chin, and then there is no could be no Enchantress counterpick. So mm -hmm. what is it Gosu gonna go for? If they if they grab the Chen, like you said, there's gonna be at least a nature's profit coming for infused and maybe a Shadow Demon. And, and you are right, Shadow Demon doesn't completely fit into the metagame, but it does allow them to dive. You can get diving, uh, you can dive more effectively if you can just disable somebody for two and a half seconds, and then get maybe like Soul Catcher and a stun after that. But yeah, you are right, he doesn't do a ton of damage to towers really. I mean, you can banish yourselves, get some illusion damage, but that's not really worth it. So um, I, I still think he's a very strong hero. It might push the game a little bit more towards ganking, which we do see some games, but I don't know. I'm not really sure. We'll see. Yeah, he's definitely one of the best ganker in the game. Offensively, he's a great hero. Defensively, not so much. So there's there's a balance in that mm -hmm. regard. So Chen is going to get the picked up here. Nothing too surprising here. I'm a little bit surprised that they're opting for Chen instead of the Furion. I still think Furion's a little bit more um, safer in the late game. And we see Fuse immediately picks it up. And there you go. Shadow Demon is going to be the pickup. So let's yes. see if they're going to be playing. They, so far, they have two great gankers. We think about Furion as a pusher. He definitely can push. Uh, but he he's a great ganker with that global TP as well, so we'll see how Infuse is going to play this one up. And they will pick up a Beastmaster. Uh, long duration disables are probably the best way to shut down Shadow Demon. Uh, kind of like burst nukes and burst disables. Heroes like Lion are very good against him, in my opinion. Um, at least in the mid game. If you can disable him and do a couple burst nukes and not allow him to cast a lot of his spells, that's the best way to shut him down. But with the Beastmaster pickup for Mitsugosu, that's a hero that has been seen a lot in the last week or two. He's kind of moved up to a tier one ban, tier one pick recently. Teams are really valuing are valuing the crap out of him, partially because of the decent damage done from the axes that can be boosted up by a medallion, and also because of his aura just being so powerful. Yep, and speaking of aura, it's not surprising at all for Gosu to actually pick the Venge and the Beastmaster together. So you, these tier, these two pe heroes are superior with each other so well. You, for one, you get the ganking that uh, Purge was talking about, the roar, of course, now with the magic missile and the swap as well. And you're stacking aura like crazy. So you got the attack speed aura from the Beastmaster, you got the damage aura from the Ventral Spirit, and of course, Chen will be holding to you know three or four aura, depending what items and what creeps he has. So mm -hmm. suddenly, whatever Gosu is going to be picking up as a carry. It's going to be ridiculously strong just from the Aorus itself. So they might even, uh, don't even need to pick a really hardcore carry. They could just soft carry with the Marana, and that should be good enough. So, Gosu has a lot of versatility in terms of laning as well. Ventral Spirit could be uh, paired up along Chen in the jungle, or you could do some more traditional, you know, dual top with a Chen defensive jungling and then, you know, do a long lane. So, Gosu is just very versatile with their picks right now, and it's going to be working out very nice for them. Yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. Uh, one nice uh, added bonus of having the Chen in the pool, it's going to make it much harder for Shadow Demon to use any Soul Catchers and team yep. fights. Um, the way that it works, guys, is there's a giant AoE that he can cast, but it's a random a random person in the AoE gets that buff applied or the debuff applied to them. So if there's creeps all over the battle, there's and there's nobody at extremities of the team fights, then it's really hard to get that to cast on the hero you want it to use on. So that balances out the fact that it's imbalanced in some senses. 50% bonus damage to a single target is just so strong at certain points of the game. So we'll still see. I, I'm excited to see how the Shadow Demon really impacts this game. But the last pick is going to be a uh, Priest of the Moon for Infused, and that'll allow them to do a nice solo mid, possibly, or uh, maybe we'll, like, we'll see Shadow Demon Mirana lane. Or Disruption hero combo. Pretty legit yeah. stuff. So um, There's the Tinker being banned. Is, is Tinker trending up lately? I have I've not seen much. Him. That's completely new to me. Okay, so maybe they're a little bit afraid of the global potential from my Furion and Tinker, but when you see a Furion, you don't think like, oh my, immediate Tinker connection here. I, yeah. I That just came out of left field, so I'm not too sure whether these two teams scrim with each other, or maybe they're afraid of March of the Machine, which actually could hurt up Chen Creeps a little bit, but that's, that's just really surprising, so I'm not too sure whether it's a misclick. Uh, I'm not going to make too many guesses beyond that. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Uh, someone's saying it's a respect ban. I don't know if Infuse is playing, yeah, I don't playing know Tinker they, a lot or yeah. not, but I mean, you could you could argue there are great things that could be done with Soul Catcher plus a Tinker combo. That's probably obscene amounts of damage to a single hero, but uh, I'd be a little surprised about that. And they already do kind of have a lot of farm dependent heroes. You know, if they picked a Tinker up right away, they would be a little limited. But I like the Sand King or the Skeleton King ban as well from Infuse. That would have fit into their into Gosu's lineup pretty well. Probably would have just had to get a fast four staff, and then his damage would already be pretty good <laughs> with yeah. the uh, attack and the damage auras. Not only the four staff, you could actually take Vampiric Aura early and continue the aura strat. And now with the uh, Chen creeps and the, I guess, Centaur fur box in the front, they could actually tank a lot with the life steal, and you have a billion to aura to work with. Um, it actually also may be indication that Infuse might be looking into some big AOE ultimates. Surely uh, Skeleton King is a counter to that. But judging from the first three picks, might not be it. I think they're going for a little bit more ganking or into lineup. It's going to be hard 
to kill heroes, such as Queen of Pain, such as the tanky Beastmaster, especially if they have the Hand of God back up and Holy Persuasion back up. So Infuse got to pull some big burst damage out if they want to continue the skanking strat. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I like the fact that they did pick up the Queen of Pain just because he doesn't really get to get that countered by a Shadow Demon. Um, if there is a solo mid hero, they're going to have to be worried about that setup. And Queen of Pain is one of the few heroes who can actually play decently against Shadow Demon. His main annoying spell is Disruption, which banishes the Queen of Pain or any hero, and then spawns illusions of them, which then start attacking. So the regular ranged hero laning against a Shadow Demon would get hit by these illusions a couple times. You have to back up every time it happens. And Queen of Pain will just be able to blink out, so it'll reduce the damage by a lot every time he does cast that spell. Yeah, the club is also a very good hero in this regard. I mean, in Fuse, we're talking about it's a gank good ganking lineup, but if you look at the actual heroes, they don't have any stuns. I mean, there's there's the Marana arrow, but that, that's really it. They have some slows, they have Sprout, which can be considered as a pseudo-stun. But for the most part, I think Queen of Pain in a mid-game situation, when she picks up a Lincoln Sphere, if she's going for that, she's basically impervious to any kind of gank upon her. So I think it's actually looking very good for, for its ghost to right now, and... Infused, I'm still waiting for them to surprise us here. I think Lion would be a very decent pick, especially in the recent buff for the 4 second Hex. Uh, that would really mess mm -hmm. up Karina Pain, and maybe the Beastmaster as well. Um, yeah. But I have no idea what they're trying to do. Uh, it doesn't look like they have big synergy going on, so maybe, okay, it's going to be a sanking, so that's going to extend the ganking a little bit. It gives them very strong laning as well. Uh, that's what Infused got going for them. They have really, really good lanes. Yeah, they could do something nasty like a Shadow Demon Priest of the Moon and a Sanking tri lane. That's like if that's against the solo here, that's a guaranteed kill every time it goes off. Uh, but it's going to be a Ricky for the last pick coming out of Gosu. Um, that's going to give him some nice uh, smoke screen. Smoke screen great against heroes like Sand King, even Shadow Demon as well. And if he gets some decent farm up in his lane, he's going to be a pretty decent force to be reckoned with in the mid game. Yeah, I wonder where they're going to put this SA. The traditional lane is going to be Venge SA top with Chen defensive jungling. Mm -hmm. But Infuse is going to expect that. So let's see if they're going to counter. And I I'm not sure whether Queen of Pain could handle that that initiation combo, if she's left alone on the bot lane. Um, if you throw against Shadow Demon and Mirana against her, then she's pretty much screwed. Yeah, I would agree. The The main thing, the only way to get around from that probably, is to constantly position herself on opposite of the creeps from Mirana. That way, if she does get banished, the arrow will not be able to land down, pretty much. That's the only way that she would be okay with it. But the last pick is going to be a Slardar for Infused. And that means that Shadow Demon is going to be playing the support role this game, uh, unless it's Sand King, which I guess is also a possibility, but uh, not or quite Furion. sure. Or it could be Furion. Um, yeah. That's true. Uh, we'll probably know once the players uh, pick the hero, so I'm, I'm pretty sure Waga's going to be playing the Priestess. He's generally the Priestess player in the team, and yeah, I have no idea how they're going to lane this. Meanwhile, Gosu, it's a, little, a lot more standard. Uh, I'm very interested to see what this Beastmaster skill build and item build is going to be. Uh, if we're going to see him take any beast right at level 2, then we're going to know that they're going to be doing a little bit more pushing oriented item, or pushing oriented strategy early on. And it's not going to be bad because they, they need a little bit of tower goal in terms to buff up the Queen of Pain, buff up this uh, the Ricky, because both of them are actually a little bit momentum based. Uh, if you give them a couple of tower gold, then they give you that quick defusal blade, a quick Lincoln or the Axe Scepter, and that's going to be really good uh, walking into the mid game. Yeah, it really will. Um, sorry, one sec, let me change my scroll rate. So it's nice and smooth for everybody. Beautiful. All right, so for the Radiant team, this is Infused, guys. We have uh, Regen loves Nico Robinson. Robin playing Shadow Demon. We have Wagamama on the Nature's Prophet. Mini on the Slardar. Fishbone's playing the Sand King, and EGM is playing the Priest of the Moon. Very interesting uh, trade up here. In terms of the heroes, I mean, on the other side with Ghost of Boba is going to be playing the uh, Queen of Pain universe, playing the Beastmaster. We have Kurok handling the Stealth Assassin. Uh, Painted Go is going to be on the Chen, and our stand-in for today, Ix Mike eighty eight, is going to be playing the Ventral Spirit. Cool stuff, and we are going to be remaking to get the Russian streamers in, so we will be doing that really fast here. Is it the same secret password? I'm going to assume so. We will find out, and I will not leak the password because I would never do that. There we go. It's definitely going to be an interesting game. Um, it's it's definitely possible that we'll see uh, probably Beastmaster solo bottom. That's been very common the last couple days. They generally start off at level 1, pick up the axes, run straight bottom, and just clear that first trees, that first clump of trees, just so they have vision of the jungle next to them. So I expect to see something like that. Um, and then they just go for, I don't know, it seems like some, some teams go max axes, max aura, some teams go axes with uh, birds up, but I haven't seen a team not max axes in a while. In, a couple, in probably four or five days, so 
I think this is going to be the, the very standard axe into aura build. I mean, you're picking four aura heroes. Yeah. Very strange to just not pick it. Or maybe they're going to delay it to mid-game, because Ventral Spirit actually don't usually pick up aura early. Although I've seen teams actually just go stun aura, stun aura, aura. Some, something like that as well. So mm -hmm. uh, she's a very versatile hero. You could switch up her build. So a lot of um, possibility coming out from Miss Gosu. Yeah, I would agree with that. We are just waiting for one more from Infused here, and we'll get started. Uh, might be waiting for a lot as well. And now I'm going to have to try to patiently remember all the heroes are in the game. Oh, uh, that's right. For a second, I was like, wow, there's no Lycan pick. Then I remembered. He's still on test server next week is when we will have to worry about him getting thrown in the game. Interesting slaughter, but it's going to be a nice counter against Ricky, so they will have that as well. That was the last counter pick. Uh, kind of forced their Shadow Demon to be more of a support role, I think, but... Or, or is it... I think it's Sand King can play support. Fishbone usually plays support for, for Infused, I believe, so... Yes, I um, believe he does. So probably going to see a Sand King support, which does occasionally happen. May not be the best thing, because then it's going to be longer for him to get his Blink Dagger up, but that's okay. What do you think the Shadow Demon skill build is going to be? Is it going to be Disruption into Poison with a single level into Soul Catcher, or is it going to be Disruption and Soul Catcher only and no Poison at all? Now, um, we see a lot of pro players really disagreeing. I feel, uh, my personal opinion is that, uh, <laughs> God's this tag, <laughs> uh, my, my personal opinion about Shadow Demon is, as a solo hero, he has tons of offensive capabilities uh, with the max Shadow Poison, but I feel like in team fights you never really have the time, okay, uh, you never really have the time to cast more than like three or four, something like that. You know, like three or four shadow poisons, and even then you're waiting to trigger the poison. You don't always get it off. You know, it's. I feel like it's not the best team fight. It depends how long the team fight goes. So, and for that reason, I feel like Max Soul Catcher first is so powerful, especially with ganks and things like that. I could kind of see how uh, how that would work. Um, I'm thinking in terms of, you know, how like there's always a a a good thirty seconds where both teams kind of just dance around in between a tower. Yeah. And, you know, they fire off multiple spells. I think that's where Shadow Demon makes his worth. If he's going for the Poison Build, that's where he's going to spam a lot. Uh, poison Build not only is going to, you know, get that damage counter ticked up, and also it's going to give you a little bit more sight. So that's going to uh, force some heroes to run around a little bit. And that's going to might set up uh, the the arrow from, from the from the Priestess. So mm -hmm. I, I could see some effectiveness in the Poison Build, but also in a team fight, um, Poison might be better because Soul Catcher is harder to land on a single target. Again, there's a thousand units around. I, it's really tough to call. I think a big indication is going to be how how he's going to be laning. Generally, I think solo Shadow Demon likes to go for the Poison Bill, whereas support Shadow Demons like to go for the Soul Catcher. Yeah, but that's just levels, yeah. It, it's just so difficult to call because even in Dota One, Shadow Demon wasn't played too much. Um, he was Dota around. One? Really? Yeah, he was around for a bit, and then um, I think some Chinese teams they did love to solo them, but he kind of phased out after a while. Um, and teams actually just don't pick and ban him at all nowadays. Really. Yeah. I wasn't aware of that. I haven't followed the uh, Dota 1 scene for quite a while, so I was not I was not aware of that fact. But he's still a really strong solo hero for sure. Arguably, most people say he's the best the best solo hero in the game, but would you agree with that? Uh, no, not even close. No? Who, who would you close. say? Uh, well, it depends who you're up against, but I really like Destroyer. Um, yeah, he's, he's very, very strong. He's just so annoying. I mean, Volker, actually, it's very strong as well. And there's like a good old Bad Rider, you know? Yeah. They all have their strengths, for sure. I feel like... Shadow Demon's gank potential, like let, no, let's say Shadow Demon is soloing and somebody's ganking the mid lane, he is like the strongest hero ever because you can disruption soul catcher and then like any other like one nuke with a ranged attack on right. top of yours is like a guaranteed kill. So I, there's there's merits and for a lot of those different heroes. So I think he's definitely up there. I would say probably top five. I haven't looked at a list or anything, but he's interesting for you to say the the top five <laughs> solo mid. Actually, the uh, like I don't know a month ago I actually released a video. Oh, did you? Where uh, my friend and I argue what the top five solo mid of all time is, and Shadow Demon was actually on neither of our list. Really, I huh. forgot exactly what was on our list, but Shadow Demon was not even considered because we were na naming some very broken stuff. But has nothing to do with this game, or yeah, uh, we'll see. That's okay. That's all interesting. I, I haven't watched that video. I watched your top five um, non ultimate abilities. That that was, that was not well prepared enough. <laughs> we had like one out of think, and obviously okay. did not even remember Plague War was in the game. Yeah, Plague Ward is obscenely good. Yeah. It really is very, very good ability. So that's true. Bane, Bane is actually a very strong solo, but he doesn't transition well right. Right. in the game. He's so powerful. Right at level six, it's like, well, I hope I have more than seven hundred HP or something. You know, otherwise I'm dead. Let's 
seems like Teal is playing. Um, no, not not Teal. Does Region Region usually play support, right? So I, it's gonna be a support. Yeah, he's gonna buy the uh, chicken right now. So it's gonna be support Shadow Demon. We'll oh, see. Reason. Okay, yeah, he is going for that. I just turned up my graphics, by the way. I don't know if you've done this yet, but it's amazing if you turn shadows up all the way. I don't know if your graphics card can handle it or not, but it's this game is beautiful. Have you ever noticed that? What? I, I this, think everything that, is packed on my... How beautiful this game is. Yeah, it's, it's it looks nice. Gotta turn those shadows up. Everything looks so much better with shadows. Those trees look real and stuff. Let me do that it's right wonderful. now, actually. Is this right up. Let me do the shadows up. Is this a new addition or something? Yeah, there's like a bunch of graphic settings that got added. They redid the graphics section again. So, are you talking about what's uh, Shadow High? Yeah. Okay, it's default already there. Okay, great. Okay. It looks good. Alright, great. We, we're now both enjoying the same okay. beautiful things. Alright, so a lot of Infused now in their jungle. Looks like Dire Team's splitting up a couple so places. They are going to be doing the Ricky Venge top with the Chen jungle. Mid is going to be Bulba playing the Queen of Pain, so possibly expecting the Shadow Demon, but he didn't get a Magic Wand start. Magic Wand actually a pretty good ability against Shadow Demon, because he does spam that poison a lot, if he does go for that route. Um, but it looks like it may be a tri-lane bottom or something, I don't know, uh, probably Priestess Moon mid, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think Priestess mid is a good choice, because you expect the Venge and the uh, Chen to be a top lane, and that means your mid lane is going to get ganked all day long, especially if you don't have the proper war support. Both Ventral Spear and the Chen has a uh, Smoke of the Seat, respectfully, mm -hmm. so having the leap on the mid lane is just so valuable, invaluable to get out of that gank. Uh, it actually might be a dueling mid. Uh, Sanking is kind of roaming around there. Good war by Fishbone. Again, you expect the ganks coming from the top, so having any extra vision is going to be just solid. Yeah, that's really smart for sure. And it's actually going to be a dual lane up against this Queen of Pain. This makes it so Bulba is actually have to worry a little bit about dying. And as you can see from his position, he's already hanging back a decent amount. If the stun comes from Sand King and they have an arrow follow-up, then that's actually going to be a decent amount of damage, and they only have to do that once or twice before Bulba runs out of uh, HP. His Queen of Pain armor very low as well, so that's part of the reason that's quite dangerous. Couple of hits being traded on the top lane here. Looks like Ix might, might be taking a little bit of trouble. Nice block here by Wagamama using the tree and actually might pick up the first blood. He also used the tree to actually block off both the camps here. He's gonna turn around for magic and missile, but Waga just body blocked with tree and that is just pro. He's gonna die here, but no big deal. You picked up the first blood as a soul top lane. I mean, what else are you gonna ask for? Yeah, that's like, that never happens. That really does never happen. Great play. If you guys are wondering how he did that, he just right-clicked his main hero, and then he specifically micro just the Triant. And if you block well enough, you're able to pick him off there, so I'm sure Ix might be a little embarrassed about that one. But once they get in front of you and block you like that, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. So he's able to pick up that early gold, um, and now he's up to 450. Probably going to go for a fast null talisman, apparently. Not sure if he's going to make a dagon, but he, he might, depending on how his farm goes. If it goes really well up here, which this shouldn't be happening, but if it does, we could might see something fun like that. Yep, he does have that, uh... He does have the parts. Uh, we'll see. But meanwhile, on the bottom here, another very strong combination with the, uh... Well, region just popped up with Disruption right now. The combo in this lane is basically, as you expect, the Disruption into a Sprint, and then Crush right on top. Of course, the two Illusions are going to be there as well. And there's just a lot of damage. Looks like he is going to go for the poison build. Very interesting choice, especially in a situation like this where the enemy could easily just counter by picking up a magic stick. But he is uh, stacking up on the Beastmaster, forcing him back. Yeah, he doesn't necessarily have the mana to spam that. I feel like that was a little bit of a waste there. He spent 150 mana casting those three spells. And that is a huge percentage of his mana pool. He only has one clarity potion left. And I also feel like a one level soul catcher could do way more in this early mm -hmm. trading situation. If you're against a solo hero there and you're trying to trade hits, why not throw the soul catcher? It's going to guarantee that you make more off of your last hits than spending like 150 on something like soul catcher. Yep. Or I'm sorry, uh, like shadow poison. It looks like Sentinel wants, or excuse me, Dyer wants to get a push up on the top. Uh, and, uh, well, they have. Uh, Illusions from Waga, he's got Trina as well, and Kuroz is taking Tower Focus, he's gonna go down! Wow. Oh, nice blink here, but just not enough, and the Magic no. Missile went to Illusion, nice baited out by the uh, by Waga. Waga's just playing so well right now, early on. I, I don't understand how that happened, it seemed like the Tower changed targets or something weird like that, and they were trying to go all in on that Illusion, and I, I and there was a stun as well, I don't know what's going on up here, but Wagamama is either getting lucky or playing really, really well, his first blood definitely was him playing well. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm not too sure. Are we are we on a US US West uh, host or something like that, or are you in a Europe host? Uh, uh, I'm gonna assume it's a US East. Okay, oh, makes sense. Makes sense. In infused is Sweden, right? Uh, yes, Sweden. I think they're primarily Sweden. So, I was huh. I was gonna make some remark about that tower being racist towards Americans, but um, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense if it was an American host. 
Yes, for sure. And looks like Region continuing to Shadow Poison leveling, or Shadow... Yeah, Shadow Poison leveling. He's got three stacks up on the Beastmaster. We'll see how much damage he's able to trigger from this one. And there's a Salve as well uh, by the Shadow Demon to heal him back up to full. So he's going to continue to do as much ranged damage as possible to Universe, who is trying to solve this bot lane with that Stout Shield. A couple of heroes in the jungle. Going to be ganking behind Wagamama, but what is Wagamama going to show up once again? The center is in position. Here it comes. Their heroes are still invisible. It's daytime, so they will be seeing it very, very shortly. Do they have vision of this? They Radiant does have vision of the centaur, and here comes the chase. He's got good positioning, but he will be chased. There's a nice sprout going down. He's going to try to teleport out. Will he be able to make it? The smoke goes down. That's an easy kill. So finally, complexity. I'm not complexity. Sorry. Gosu able to take the the kill on Wagamama there for an easy trade, not actually losing anybody in the trade. Yeah, it's just tough for him to escape because both for the Ventral Spirit and the uh, Ricky could easily get in position and cancel that blink or cancel that TP, and that's exactly what they did. Actually, on the mid lane, I, I think the Quab is handling herself quite well, because, as we know, the sanking early on, the, the Burrow Strike range actually isn't too high, and looks like they're going to make it some initiation on the Queen of Pain. That's going to scare her back a little bit, but she has a lot of regen to go through. So, this laning is not actually working as well uh, as we expected for Infuse. Yeah, that's that's pretty weird. Did she, I don't know if she had extra regen brought to her or something. Ooh, the arrow's going to land through the creep. Big mistake by a bulb. We'll have a blink off here, but there's a Starfall. And no stun from Fishbone. He actually just did not cast that. I don't know if his cooldown just came up or he just didn't think they would get him, but gonna blink back from the Queen of Pain, use the salve. At the very least, they spent a lot more of her regen up. And she spent quite a bit on mana as well. 200 mana there, doing the scream as well as the blink. Yeah, and also, again, very interesting skill build here from Beastmaster. Uh, he actually went for Aura. Now, Aura in the mid lane would be pretty good because you want to push the lane and grab the bottle, or grab the rune, excuse me. On the bot lane, especially on this hard lane, you, I'm not sure whether you want to push. I thought the Hawk might be a little bit better here. But again, as we talked about earlier, if you're picking you know, an Aura base lineup, you're probably going to be skilling the Aura. So maybe he's going it for, for the mid game and not so much for the laning presence. But right now, he's allowing Minis. You can absolutely get free farm. Uh, Minis, by the way, is, uh, has got 30 CS and 13 to Nice. We're only five minutes in the game. He's getting six minutes. That's absolutely insane. Yeah, that's really good. Ricky is almost matching him. He's up to 27 and 8 despite dying, though. Uh, but he also does have a kill, so there's that made up a little bit. Um, he's up to a boots with a boots of elven skin, poor man's shield, and a quelling blade. So his last hitting is great. He's up to level 6 now, so he's going to be very unlikely to die to Wagamama unless he gets overly aggressive within tower range. And Max out the blink strike first. Saw this yesterday. Art style playing a lot of Ricky lately. And with the fast. Uh, Ring of Aquila able to do Blink Strike Harass, just throw the 120 damage on the enemy and uh, just continue going to last hit. It's been pretty interesting. Yep. So, a uh, very tame early game here so far. Not kind of what you expect coming from a Chen and a Ventral Spirit who both have Smoke of the Sea. They got that one gang on the top lane, but now just uh, very much the one to get a, a lot of levels up. And I do like this choice. Both these heroes are a lot better with levels, especially if you get Hand of God and Swap mm -hmm. early on. And it uh, looks like they might want to pop their second smoke to set up a gank. Or. Beaches is delivered uh, on, on both the supports, so they could actually make a very good attempt on either top on the mid, uh, but still no no aggression yet. Yeah, mid would definitely be much harder. Sand King able to go invisible, of course. Uh, he does only have... Ooh, it was a miss smoke, actually. Did not catch the eventual spirit in that. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that's just a visual bug, I guess. She looks visible to me. And yes, yeah, so is the Seder Hellcaller, so that was just visual bugs. I guess that's why the centaur looked visible to me, but must have actually been smoked in. Wagamama... Great juking right now. I love his positioning. They're looking for him. Oh, he comes back out, though. And it looks like they want to go on the Chen. Chen's going to take tower damage. Nature Prophet's going to ulti this and almost going to kill her. Last tower will get the kill, though. And IX might get a cleaned up double kill for Nature's Prophet. Now, Wagamama playing so good with the TP supports. Slaughter not able to get the amp damage off on the Ricky, so they will not be able to get that kill. And Wagamama's still trying to survive. Can they kill the Seder? We're going to see maybe a stun from Sand King. I'm sorry, Sand King is on the same team. And they do kill at 100 gold. Ricky Mario's thinking about it. And I think, gonna happen. I think Infused, no, they know it was, where's the smoke, there's a smoke to cancel, immediate Burrow Strike and Arrow's gonna hit as well, but the Queen of Pain comes in right now, they're gonna kill Waga, are we gonna have a deny, where's the deny, Marana, do it, do it, do it, no, no oh one's denying, looks gosh. like the rogue's gonna kick up the kill, buy back here, are we gonna buy a dust and immediate port in, let's see where Waga, does he know, does he know he's porting right now, I guess wrong, he's gonna waste a dust as well, so a little bit unlucky there, but a good try here for Waga. But right now I have to just express how well Log is playing. He was top solo, and he's 5 and 3. That was Imba shit. <laughs> That's the best way to describe that. He played that so amazing. Not only did he kill the Chen, good positioning there, but then continued it, was able to juke away from the Queen of Pain, and barely survived there. And we didn't see Deny out of the Mirana, which would have been pretty cool. And obviously it would have been great if he teleported in and did the smoke. That would have been like top play 
all over the place. That'll but be, either way, still be. amazing. That was still really, really good. We'll do the top ten. I'm, I'm not sure sure whether that that gamble was really worth it. Uh, well, I, I guess it hindsight's twenty twenty. It was not worth it. But if you didn't buy back, you would have the dragon recipe. But yeah, after this tower, he will still have the dragon recipe if that's what he's going for. And uh, Sentinel's actually, or excuse me, Radiant's playing very nice now, and he's gonna port back to the top, trying to defend this lane. Also, one thing he did really well in that last engagement, he he dropped off the Wrath of Nature, but he again he did not click on his uh, his portion of the map. He clicked on the main map very very far away, and that allowed the Wrath of Nature to do maximum damage. And every little bit of damage helped to get that kill on the Chen and also on the Ventral Spirit. Yeah, that was very very good. Though the creep wave will push through though, Ursa Warrior just about dead though, so Chen may have to grab a new creep and there is actually there is one close by, a little low HP, but that is absolutely fine. Still Chen level four, not not able to pick up two creeps, and the creep wave will be pulled back once again by Wagamama. He does almost have a bracer picked up, so he may be going for a drone of endurance or something. A little weird when some teams or some players go for a bracer as well as a null talisman, but it's pretty basic stats, and if you do build them into things later, it's not a huge deal. And he's actually gonna TP to the bot lane. Looks like they might try to take this bot tower perhaps. Yep. And again, Region haven't ha done too much, to be honest, early on. Um, hasn't really set up a kill on the Beastmaster. We do see Breaker coming in with the smoke and the roar. They could very easily pick off, at the very least, Region. There's the Axis, and it looks like Region's gonna be dead. That was two hits, and that just shows you how strong Black uh, Backstab is. There's, do we have any dust? Nice invisibility by the Priestess. And Waga has got a juke, or he's gonna just run straight to the tower. That's, that's fine, too. Yeah, he's gonna make it too. That's our early Priest of Moon ulti. She's yeah. level six. Wow. wow. You don't expect Skilled that. that there. And I'm pretty sure that that Ghostu did not expect it either, because generally against a Priestess in the mid game, you gank with smoke or dust. But yeah, I guess you don't expect this early. Definitely yeah, not the standard. Yeah, that's the earliest. Book. That's the earliest Moonlight Shadow I've seen in a very, very long time. It's more like level ten or eleven at least before they pick that up usually. You know, Waga continued to exert his uh, presence all over the map, was bought just now in TP Top. He's up to 2k go and has not spent a big majority of it. We both wonder what exactly it's going to be. He's going to teleport to the mid lane, help the kill on Boba. Boba's going to blink out here, and are we going to have an arrow set up? It's still up here, but not going to even attempt it. Um, but right now, with uh, two tower down here for the Dire, and actually, they have kept up all their towers, considering that they're up against the Chen. Infuse is playing nice. Yeah, I'm a little confused that uh, Priest Moon didn't go for that arrow there, but she just just didn't do it. She had it off cooldown, she had the mana, just didn't shoot it through. I don't know if she was concerned about getting a last in shot, thought that she had a little bit more time, but a little peculiar for sure, and as a result, not even going to get close. Wow, Slardar, what is he doing up here? Nobody is even there. He's going to be diving into Tier 2 Tower, eventual Spirit in position, and Queen of Pain now comes in. There's the uh, Poison as well as the AoE. He does get the sun off, but he does go down. That was weird as hell. Oh, he has about 30 seconds to think about why did he commit that, that play. And I think he would need a little bit more than 30 seconds to figure out that answer. And he does have an Urn of Shadows. Um, very interesting build. You generally don't see Urn on on Slaughters, uh, simply because they need a other other uh, spells, or excuse me, other items a little bit more. A little bit of engagement in the mid lane. They see a Queen of Pain, but Ricky, they know it's there as well. It's it's time for the supports on the uh, Radiant side to start picking up uh, Dust and, and True Sight to really counter this Ricky, because... This is the time to go for some kills on him. If you try to kill him after he gets a purge blade, it's just going to be hard. Because even if you smoke or dust him, then he could just purge off the dust if he wants to do so. And it, he's just a slippery monster at that point. Yeah, he is for sure. And it looks like Wagamama does pick up the staff of wizardry. I hope it's going to be a dagger, not a four staff. No four staff. Anybody's a second null talisman. So. I, I have no idea what he's... I hope it's a Dagon. I really hope it's a Dagon. Um, it's actually a very, very... Maybe not a super old Nature's Prophet build, but it's one of the few item or one of the few heroes that Dagon is actually okay on, because then, of course, he can teleport anywhere, add not only his ulti damage, but additionally that Dagon damage, and pick off a lot of heroes in short periods of time. Ventral Spirit, um, Chen, even something like Queen of Pain. They actually have a lot of squishy heroes on the Dire team. Looks like Moran's gonna pick up a DD, but she's running a straight into a whole bunch of Chen creeps. Nature Prophet destroys yet another tower on the bot lane, and they're gonna defend the top tower as well. Very, very nicely done. Uh, so Infuse just on the lockdown in terms of preventing towers being pushed and pushing a lot of their towers and stuff. And having a Freon definitely is very helpful in that regard. 1800 is his gold, and so far, both of us very curious what his purchase might be. Ricky, double blade of alacrity already, so very close to that. Uh, ooh, as we see me on the bot. Again, his positioning just a little bit questionable. See, trying to get solo kills, he almost gets Bulba at least with the amp damage. Nature's Prophet, oh yeah, the Nature's Prophet ultis it, so gets that free kill. They did a vision on her because of the amp damage, so good pick up there. Um, and yeah, 
So they're able to get that kill, but once again, why is he why is he in that kind of positioning? Is, why isn't he pushing this team or something? It's like he's trying to get solo kills on the other side of the map while his team is four man pushing him. I'm very confused with what he's trying to accomplish. Oh, I, yeah, I'm not too sure what he's trying to do, but I guess the silver lining in that is he's distracting a lot of people, and that's gonna allow uh, everyone to get in perfect position on his top lane. Chen's gonna eat an ultimate. He's gonna go down very quickly. Vishal might be in a little bit of trouble. He's gonna be fine as well. We have a teleport from Waga. I'm not too sure where he's going to. He's actually cheaping out on the mid lane to chase Kuroke. Not the best choice here, uh, considering that there's a big team fight breaking out. Teleportation goes back on the top lane here. Now gonna go on the bottom and Fishbone. Fishbone. That was just one nuke with his uh, invisibility, and now it's gonna magic wand up, and I think they're gonna make it out alive. They're still chasing Ricky. Ricky trying to get some tower help, but he's gonna take massive amount of damage. Nice blink strike out, and he's just hiding meaning all over the place, but I think he's gonna get crushed down. Yes, he will. It looks like Kurok will go down with one more right hit, and right now, Infuse up by two kills. Moonlight Shadow is gonna send everyone back out, safe and sound. Nicely done by Infuse. Huh, the Shadow Poison's been doing a lot more work than I thought it would, but been able to cast it multiple times on every hero. I love Demonic Purge, the ability. It's 50 second cooldown. can use that so often. And Mini back in the mix. Power Tread's finished. He's getting close to a Vanguard and he still does have that earn up, but able to chase down the Ricky. Ricky did end up dying there. And Queen of Pain cleaned it up pretty hard with our ulti as well, getting a lot of last hits and doing good damage to the enemy team. Yep. Again, Waga farming on the bot lane. 2800 gold. I have no idea. Still no purchase. The Courier is flying somewhere. It's not going to be for him, is he? Well, Staff of Wiz oh, sad. Necro Books. I like this choice. But that's not a dag on. <laughs> oh well. It's a good choice though. Especially against a Ricky Maru. Yep. Now he can basically teleport anywhere on the map, provide guaranteed true sight for up to like sixty seconds or something like fifty uh I don't know, thirty five seconds, okay. Unless that scales with levels of course, but Absolutely getting our hopes up with the double null tiles from the Staff of Wizardry, but he does of course go for it. Necro 2 is what his item pick up. If he was going to buy a Dagon, he would have bought it immediately when he right. had the money. And this is a much more consistent and smart choice. And Chen might be in a little bit of trouble. There's worse of disruption. No soul catcher disruption. There's just a burst strike and a purge. And I think with the Wrath of Nature, yeah, they are going to get the kill. The global power of Infuse uh, Prophet is just doing a lot of work. I might gotta be careful because you gotta expect there's a teleportation coming in from the Prophet. Engagement go happening on the top jungle as well. Meaning again, caught in a little bit of a difficult position. He does have sprint on, but he's taking mass amount of damage. Looks like Kurok is gonna finish him with a couple more right clicks. There's a crush. He might actually live just a little bit longer, but he's actually getting no support. He's trying to deny himself to the creeps, but it's not gonna be. He had a Vanguard, man. <laughs> He's too resistant against creeps. It's way past the point when you can deny yourself to neutral, so... Uh, Priest of Moon might get caught out. Ricky Maru's gonna be looking for this one. He's very close to his Diffusal Blade, not quite there yet, though. But Ricky's Blink Strike's able to do tons of damage to heroes like Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon just has an Arcane and a Wand up right now, so they're gonna have to worry about that. Nature's Prophet teleporting the Bali and able to kill the Vengeful Spirit wow. with his uh, Necro 2. Waga just played it perfectly. I'll talk about it after we watch Universe get owned by this epicenter. He's, he's gonna drop. Oh, Hand of God comes in, but it's just not enough. Waga was actually pushing the tower with his Necro book popped, and, uh, you know, the IX might TP in. It's like, okay, let's stun this prophet and get a kill on him. But immediately, Waga micro his range burn, or range treat, and, and mana burn. Uh, IX Mike, and IX Mike just stood around with no mana and. The right click went the other way, so very nicely picked up, and they're gonna bring down a tier 2 tower now. So Infuse is just climbing very, very far ahead, 17 minutes in, 2 kills ahead, but more importantly, like 3 or 4 towers ahead. Yeah, and at the very least, it's Gosu will pick up the top tower. Ooh, Ventral Spirit a little bit far forward, but in Wagamama trying to get this last hit from range, he may have to trade his life for it. There's the stun. Queen of Pain, nice stun from SK, gonna possibly stop the team initiate initiation. He's gonna get the ulti off, but almost survives there. AoE's come through, able to maybe get bold, but yes, the Demonic is going to score that one, and that's a two for one. So good pick up there, and Wegamama going to immediately buy back, going mid now, going after Korok. He actually doesn't have a Necro 3 quite yet, so unfortunately will not have the vision of the Ricky Maru, but Chen Creeps may find him, and they're going to continue to push here. A good strategy by the Radiant side, they're keeping up so much pressure, even though they're dying a lot. We talked about how Mini's dying a couple of times. Of course, Waga's been dying a couple of times as well, but they're keeping up so much pressure that the Dire just have nowhere to farm. The Creeps is constantly in front of the tower, and there's always fights going on everywhere, and it's just difficult for Kurok and uh, for the Beastmaster, who relies on a little bit of Rising to find the Rhythm to actually get these Creeps, and Kurok's, I mean, he's got the Purge Blade, but his next item should be BKB, but I don't I don't think you will find it anytime soon. Yeah, it's gonna be a little tough. Uh, very interesting skill build on Slaughter. He actually maxed sprint before crush. I don't, I don't really like this a whole lot myself. The end of movement speed is only seven percent. You can get an extra point five seconds of disable, but 
Apparently at the time you must have needed it. There's a sentry ward up in the jungle that could actually counter ward this, but I don't think the dire team will get there in time. They'd have to walk past that to see it. And Beastmaster with a Vanguard up, two levels of ore, three levels of Call of the Wild. And we'll maybe see him max out the ore next. But if you look at the gold graph, 7,500 gold advantage. That's a 28 versus 21 advantage for them. And it's Ghost who looks like they want to take a Roshan, using a smoke to get everybody in there. Well, I gotta expect that uh, Infuse would expect this. Roshan is going down very quickly with a backstab damage from Ricky. It seems like Radiant Sai, they have no idea that this is going on. Can this be happening? Yeah, I guess. Especially with Waga just pointing out and uh, summoning some trees in the jungle. And it's gonna be a very rude awakening for them as uh, they see the message flying across the board. Ricky's gonna pick that one up and he could be a lot more aggressive in the next fight. Yeah, it was a rough loss for Wagamama there. He had the tree out so close to the Roshan pit, but he didn't go check them. Not that they would have been able to defend it in time at that point, but a uh, great play by Gosu there, spending 100 on that smoke and able to score um, the gold advantage there. Looks like Ricky's going to teleport out there. Does not want to get caught by those Necro 3s. He actually took a decent amount of damage there from those, and he also picked up his Diffusal Blade just now, so he's going to be possibly ganking out somebody very serious in a uh, team fight. Yeah, I, I, I guess... He could get some solo ganks, but he's got to be careful. Uh, he knows exactly where that. Uh, oh, they can make it go on Kurok. That that the blue minions providing the true sight. It just runs out right now. Mini again takes a lot of damage under the influence of Sprint. He's gonna get roared and swap. He's gonna go down. Mini's positioning a little bit of dubious this game, and he's died a couple of times. And as a slaughter, you can't really give away those kills because zero four slaughter with ninety two creep kills. He's also a very momentum-based hero. If you don't farm a quick BKB in a blink, he's going to be uh, quickly very useless in the mid-game. Yeah, that's definitely true. More sentry wards up in the jungle, and it looks like it's going to be a sentry counter warded. Painted gold trying to find some more creeps, but just a lot of uh, satyr hell callers. Not exactly what you want. He's got does have a dark troll warlord. Ricky getting a kill on the top lane on the Mirana. Looks like a couple nukes as well as the smoke, and he did use one of his defusal blade charges for that one. So. That is one of the benefits of having that Diffusal Blade. You can all of a sudden gank those heroes that do have getaway maneuvers. You just have to make sure that you kill them before they get out of the smoke. And you can definitely do that with the Diffusal Blade. Yep, Region and Sand King smoking on the bot lane, trying to set up a kill. They're using Waga as bait right now. Queen of Pain is positioned to defend. No idea what she's going to be going for next. Uh, she's very, very poor. I think in this case, you either just want to go for the point booster for the HP or the ultimate orb for whatever item yeah, you're hoping for. Uh, but still no buy here. And it looks like the Hawk... Might be, oh, the Hawk just get immediately blown up. Both these heroes still under smoke, so they should be fine. And they are looking to maybe take the tier 2 tower mid. Possibly going to grab a kill first, if they can. Slaughter back on the mid lane, continuing to get last hits. It'll only be a moment of time before he does. Goes for crazy dives once again. And Necro 3 just scouting out there, being very proactive. The nice things about Necro 3 as well, they can kill wards. Yep. So, very, very strong. Level 3, Necro's... Oh, he's going to... Oh! Wow! Wow! <laughs> I can't believe gotta it. Gotta watch some that. mechanics videos. That he, there, there was uh, right. on that. There's that's not you, lag. That's not. I don't even know. You guys are probably confused. If you don't know the mechanics, uh, this is why we just freaked out. Diffusal blade can be used to do tons of damage to summoned units. Primarily used for like a warlock, but he used it on that melee creep because he didn't want to have vision of him. But the Necro 3 melee unit has the benefit of if it dies, it deals you like 600 pure damage. So he used it to get the kill, and it put him down to like 1 HP, and then the ranged creep took the last hit, and that was an Aegis burn. That was embarrassing. So, for 100 gold. That was a big mistake. Oh, he got 100 gold. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was not worth it. Mini gets swapped, he gets silenced as well, and looks at like the poison stack is going to be catching on. Nice disruption using defensively. No, he actually disrupted on the wrong target. Now, X Mike in a little bit of trouble. He is perched up, and looks like Sand King's ultimate on top of everyone. Bench is going to go down very quickly, and that Necro Book again up. Mini somehow still alive. He was under sprint and taking massive damage the whole time, and looks like Infuse is going to clean up. And here comes Scourge, or excuse me, Dire coming back once again. They're going to get one kill, but is that going to be enough to stop the push? Boba out of this point, same thing with Universe. Um, but yeah, that's going to be enough to scare Infuse back. That team fight would have went very differently if Kurok had that Aegis. Just saying. Yeah, yeah, it really would have. Um... I'm surprised the Slaughter was able to survive, but the Sprint kept him out of that Queen of Pain ulti. Uh, the melee Necro 3 was draining plenty of mana every single hit. It's so nice to just right-click that on here like Queen of Pain. It was draining like 60 or 65 mana or something, and when you rely so much on your mana pool, that's just a huge detriment in a team fight if you can use that. So Necro 3 really proving quite oh, useful this game, oh. way more than a Dagon would have, that's for sure. Yeah, it's not only the, the fact that Necro D 
3 is a good item, it's because he got it so early as well. I think he got like maybe 19, 20 minutes in, and that's just one of the earliest Necro 3 I've ever seen. It. Making Necro 3 not nearly as effective because the mana pool gets a little bit bigger, even if they kill the blue minion, um, their HP pool is a lot higher with a tank, things like that. But, you know, 19 minutes, 20 minutes in, it is just absolutely broken, and it, again, press, puts up a lot of pressure on the supports because uh, Waga has been counter warding with those Necro 3 as well. And that, that just means that IX might have to spend a little bit more gold to reward and things like that. So it's just overall a very good item. Mm -hmm. Or more importantly, put Observer Wards in a place where the Necro 3s can't necessarily see them. So, like for example, this area right here in the lead up jungle, the place where the Necro 3 took out that Sentry Ward. He can't put wards there anymore because Wagamama's going to continue to look. He's going to have to put them on the high ground. Yeah, so okay. at the very least... Waga's uh, just uh, putting wards. He's just checking with Necro 3. This is a very, very good mm -hmm. move, and he's going to find a pair of wards. I hope he finds a pair of wards in the mid lane. He's just been sitting there for a long time. And yeah, just so much benefit that a single Necro book could give you. Yep, and there he is doing the checks once again. Every time that it's off cooldown, he does use that. And it is a 80 second cooldown, lasts for 35 seconds. I don't know if he found a word or not. Ooh, nice Holy Persuasion on the Necronomicon Archer. You can use those, and as a result, even grab the warriors. If they want to de ward as well, they can do the same thing now. Just steal the correct warrior yep. and go for that kill. But looks like the raiding team now pushing up the mid lane. Slaughter, no new items, nothing on Fishbone either, just bracers as well as that arcane boots. And the Necro 3 is on cooldown for 35 seconds. They actually might want to wait till that's off cooldown before the fight happens. Shadow Demon does have a drone of endurance. And the creep wave gets cleared. Bulba denies the tower. Holy crap, nice play. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they care about that uh, that much. I mean, it hurts a little bit, but. And yeah, they got the tower down, so a little bit more map control. The next tower is going to be on the top one. And again, uh, we have Kurok farming, but he's got to be careful because he's basically dealing with the global gem. Uh, Wagyu TP in any time, pop the Necro 3. And Kurok, I mean, he has Yasha and he has Purge, so that is going to give him a little bit of survivability. But if Wagyu really wants to, he could get an easy kill on him. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Ricky is actually going for a possible... No, will be a BKB. He goes Yasha into the BKB now. Ogre Club as well as Mythal Hammer pick up, and that means that he's not going to be able to do... Actually, Shadow Demon can still use his ulti on Ricky, so... Yep. Ricky's going to be gunning for Shadow Demon probably at the start of every team fight, most likely, but Demonic Purge goes right through the Black King Bar, does the full stun duration. It won't do the damage at the end, but if you make a melee hero obscenely slow for a couple seconds while he pops his BKB, he is more or less doing no damage, so that'll be very, very powerful. Right. Of course, uh, he does have the blink, so that might be able enough to combat it. And looks like Smook is up on Gosu, and they're looking for someone. Waga just bypasses Observer Ward, but I think he's going to be absolutely fine. And right now, I feel like Gosu is playing Infuse this game. Infuse a lot more. Oh, looks like he's going to gonna survive. Necrobook probably not up just yet, about 30 seconds. And he's going to get a little bit of help from the Priestess, and I think that should be it. Sankin comes in to get a Burrow Strike as well. Nicely played by Infuse, saving each other. Looks like Bulba wants his kill, Wagamama pops the ulti, gonna do decent damage, about 260 to a piece, we're gonna find an ulti, Universe gonna get caught though by the Shadow Demon, Soul Catcher doing so much damage, as well as that Demonic Purge goes down, and they're gonna back off from that, I think Dire Team may be a little less interested, he will jump on Fishbone, at least he's still in the smoke, able to get him, maybe yes in the Blink Strike, great play there by Korok, able to get that kill. Yep, so one for one, I think uh, Fishbone might have made a little mistake, he actually ran back in, Mini again, decides to 1v3, uh, but the size better, but he does, despite all the deaths, he's got Strength Treads, Vanguard, uh, Urn, and a Blink Dagger, so he's pretty much set, very uh, very much so thankful for all those towers they pushed down. So now, uh, Slaughter, again, he's, he's solo hunting for people, he knows that Waku back him up, but again, it's this kind of excursion that you want to take into enemy jungle like this. Yeah, it hasn't been working for him so far, that's for sure, but he may continue to do so, and... Uh, once again, we're a little confused as to why. Maybe he's trying to pick off heroes like Vengeful Spirit or Chen, but it's, a, as the game gets later and later, even with a farm hero, it's tough to get those solo kills. So um, He could hypothetically always have cover, of course, by Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet is going to be anywhere that Slarder wants to gank, so maybe that's the main thing they're going for, but the rest of the heroes kind of out of position if they do want to help him out. And EGM on the round is just going to continue farming. He does have his Yasha finished very, very close to his Manta. I think he does actually have his Manta. Yep, Chen and Ricky bypasses those wards, so they should see him. But again, I guess Mini is just playing the initiator at this moment now. Uh, Waga, again, needs to pop the Necro 3 to get some D-Ward going on, but uh, Dyer playing very nicely to kind of... Uh, oh, I think Mini I, got to blink out. Yeah, he's going to do it. Yeah, right now, Dyer, despite the fact that there's a Necro 3 counter warding, they're keeping the wards up. They're doing a very good job of it, in fact, and uh, because of that, they're not dying. Of course, the Beastmaster also helps in that regard very much. Yeah, it really does for sure. 
three heroes on Gosu now going for some Ancient Creeps. They're doing a very good job of staying close to one another while they're farming. This is very important in a sort of global lineup, and just as you can see from Slardar so far, he is looking for those solo heroes. So this can be a huge issue to a ganking lineup in the mid game, where you say, oh, I'm just going to go gank now, but huge gold advantage, and then every time you fight, you end up running into an entire team, and that happens once or twice, and all of a sudden your advantage is gone. So this is why Gosu is being so defensive with their roaming. Yeah, and it seems like this game's not going to be going towards a, a quick finish, so in terms of looking at a late game, uh, farm-wise, we have 157 on Waga, 130 on the Slaughter, 120 on the Marana, Mew on the other side here, 160 on the Self Assassin, and just, I guess, 70, 80 apiece on the other heroes, so... It's not looking too good for Gozu now. They will have the auras, and we talked about uh, how it really helps you to extend into the mid and late game, but the aura is only going to carry you so far. It's going to be items and farms and level at this point. And I gotta say, uh, Infuse is leading in all three of those departments. Yeah, they're definitely doing really good. I think it is looking a little bit better for Infused, and in terms of late game carry, they will have to worry about the Ricky Maru, who is arguably a, a harder carry than anything the Radiant team has, but Mirana already has her Manta style up, so she will probably go for a damage item or a Black King bar next, maybe a BKB, just so she doesn't have to worry about the smoke. Um, but either way, they're still going to have a Shadow Demon with an ulti that goes through Ricky's BKB. So as long as Shadow Demon can stay alive in the team fight long enough to be able to cast that, it's going to be really hard for Ricky to contribute if it's a straight up 5v5 team fight. Looks like Slaughter is going to blink in. Is he going to steal the Aegis? So he gets swap away. No one picks up the Aegis just yet. And it looks like Ventral Sphere finally picks up on Marana very, very far away. Waga. Uh, and his teammate's not really in position, so that might have been the, the best actually move. Looks like the arrow's gonna hit on Kuroke. Are they gonna go for a kill? They really cannot. And I guess that worked out fine to deny the Aegis. Uh, Slaughter was still alive. He's gonna come back in. Who is he gonna go for instead? He's gonna go for Universe. Huge ultimate from the Sank. He's gonna go for Ix Mike. He goes down. He does have the Aegis. Kuroke still doing mass amount of damage. It looks like self disrupt here from the. Uh Shadow Demon is going to survive soon enough. Kuro still detected. He's going to be in huge trouble. He's going to go down very, very soon. I hope. Yes, Kuro struck in. And no one focus on the Kuro. He's going to get sent back home. And somehow, <laughs> Gosu is winning this fight. Nice body block here by Bo Boba. And I think they are going to get a kill on him as well. One more match. There's a swap here. And that's going to be it. Wow. The eventual. Well, Mini wants to fight. <laughs> Gonna blink through, do the stun, and run out through, but triple kill for Bulba there, and the Aegis on Vengeful Spirit actually proved very useful there. He was able to do the swap at the end and guarantee that last kill, but great team fight from Gosu. The Ricky Maru hitting really, really hard right now. 83 plus 58 agility is hitting for like 170 damage before backstab, so if you leave that Ricky Maru to his own devices, he's able to get easy kills, and it's pretty surprising he was able to do that well, because he actually popped the BKB to guarantee that he killed the Roshan. Yep. And it always confuses me a lot of times I see in pro games and public games like where someone tries to do a heroic Roshan steal, but they do it with their item full slot full. And that's exactly what Mini did. He actually got in in the perfect time to get a crush off. He, I think he might even got the last hit, but he had a TP scroll in his Lysic slot and that prevented him getting the Aegis. I think with the Aegis on Mini, that, that team fight, again, would have made a bigger difference. It would have swung completely. But now at the end, we're going to see Queen of Pain finishing her Hex. Uh, straight Hex Rush, and I think Waga is very close to it as well, just about 200 go away. So with the Hexes added into the equation this game, a little bit difficult to call because Sankin just picked up that Blink Dagger as he showcased it in that last team fight as well, so it's very difficult to say who actually has the lead right now. Yeah, it definitely will be interesting. Sankin's ulti did go immediately on Universe, who is the uh, Beastmaster player, but it wasn't the best AoE damage. Wagamom actually wants a kill, he's coming in, trying to pick off the Ricky Maro, can they get the Sable? He's gonna pop the BKB though. He yeah, absolutely fine. Some arrows will fly across the map, but he will survive no problem. Yep. Not too bad exchange. Pop the Necro book for the BKB charge. Now he's going to send it off for a little bit of counter warding. And, uh, yeah. Looking pretty good so far for Infuse, but it's getting, again, uh, the, the go team goes to, it could be very dangerous. I think Painted Go just uh, all chat, how do you actually play this hero? Chen is a little bit difficult to play, but I think he's doing a fine job here so far, microing his creep. He does have his mecha as well, and a couple of wards. Seems like they want to take this tier 1 bot tower, and I don't believe that Infuse is too interested in defending that one. Yeah, that's a pretty good point. I didn't really realize that the Radiant team has such a huge tower yeah. advantage here, despite being against the Chen, not very typical at all, but... This is, once they take the towers, or even the towers up, they're actually going to be very, very close in terms of gold farmed overall so far this game. So it's looking really good for Gosu, especially because of the sheep stick on the Queen of Pain. That means any carry potential coming out of the Raidy team is going to be easier to shut down, and since they are only semi-carries, that means it's going to be pretty tough. They might find the Ricky, though. Oh, they're not going to spot him. It is nighttime. They could have gotten that kill there. Or, yeah, he had BKB for 8 seconds. Oh, there's going to be a dust by Wagamama looking for the kill. 
and Slaughter is going to blink past looking for him as well, but they're not going to find him, so put a lot of effort into finding that Ricky Martin, not to mention revealing their position. Yeah, they also Moonlight Shadow right under um, the influence of Observer, where that just went away, what a timing, and I, I, D Dyer does know that there's a immediately war dropping on the mid lane. Uh, yes. So very well prepared is uh, Gosu, and both teams kind of just running around the, uh, the jungle and turtling it up, and again, in broad kind of you know, dairy crafting that favors Dyer a little bit more, but Dyer is down by about 7k gold right now. Uh, yeah, and dropping a little bit. Um, after that tower hit, they're going to be looking a little better. The Ricky Mars is going to be on the high ground. He's got his Manta style completed. I love this item progression. It's going to allow his illusions to do feedback damage, which means that it does lower their mana. And not to mention, it'll make things a little bit more confusing in the team fights. You can, especially if he eats an amp damage from Slaughter, he can pop that Manta style and disable that debuff. So that's going to be very, very useful towards keeping himself alive in the upcoming team fights. Assuming that Necro 3 is dead, it'll be much harder to get vision of him. Yeah, right now this SA is getting to a point where he's actually quite scary. With the BKB, you could kind of still deal with him because... Uh, you could just physically hit him down, but now with the Manta style on top of it as well, the armor value is higher, he gets more strength to work with. How, how do you actually kill Kurok? And, and I think all really need, uh, Dyer need to do is get a Vlad. Uh, so we see a Blink initiation on... Wow, Shadow Demon just exploded. And uh, Blink is yeah, he really did. support Shadow Demon, not really helping that. Uh, but anyways, I was trying to say, if Chen just get a Vlad right now, I think I think goes to set, because that Ricky is looking big. Yeah, he is, really. I wonder how different this game would have been if Slaughter didn't throw his life away a couple times in the mid-game. I think that was the biggest mistakes that the Radiant team made. I mean, they, they had so many great plays from Wagamama, obviously, making getting that really fast Necro 3 up and getting some nice kills and ganks uh, that he probably shouldn't have in that laning situation. But so far, the Radiant team is looking a little scary. If they can pick out, continue to pick off the Shadow Demon here at the beginning of every teamfight, that's going to give them more time to push, and they may be able to take a tower as a result right now. Yeah, nice steal again here by our Chen's going to take it and burn a couple of uh, hundred points of mana engagement on the top lane here. It looks like Priestess gets picked off, and a continuous trend as we see initiation comes in. Nice, perfect double initiation, but it's not enough. Hand of God comes in, smoke comes in, and looks like Mimi's going to go down. Sand King's going to be shortly to follow. Priestess buys back, but again, it's not going to be enough, and that's going to open the mid a tower to be getting picked off as we see a hex on Kurok. Can we get off a kill though? He's very, very tanky, and it's just not enough. Ricky Mar does a blink in, is able to pick off the Shadow Demon as he's running away. He's still invisible, though they do not have vision of him, and it looks like he is going to make it out there. Pretty dangerous. Illusion's doing decent damage to Wegamama. I thought he was going to get picked off, but he immediately blink struck onto that Shadow Demon, scored the kill, and then ran away. They had no more vision at that point, and he's going to probably have to buy the Fusal Blade recipe in a second here as well as heal up, but it looks like he wants to kill that way first, understandably. Yeah, uh, also if you're wondering why did they not see him despite after immediate smoke was being used, uh, Kurok, again, smart move, used the Purge Blade on himself, and you could actually debuff, oh, yep, and now he's going to upgrade that Purge Blade to Purge Blade number two, and that means that he's going to have eight more charges to work with, uh, he's going to mana burn a little bit more, do a little bit more backstab damage. So right now Kurok playing very, very nice, and it's not looking that good for Infuse, as you see the gold chart, Swinging down close to zero. Do you know if this uh, EXP graph actually works? It never really makes any um, sense. Uh, did you look at? Are you doing the F seven? Um, Does it work? It looks. Assume, it looks a little bit. I assume so. Crazy. Well, if if you think about it, um, hypothetically speaking, if kills are even, you probably have about as much experience as your enemy team, right? Right. So, gold advantage is a mix of not only killing towers, but also farming creeps, so I think this makes sense. The Dire team has more kills, they've been winning team fights for quite a while now, and now that the towers are evened up, the gold graph gets more similar, but I think the, the EXP graph has been changing this whole time, so I think this is actually good information. Yeah, I guess... You can tell which team's getting momentum. I, I, just, don't, I just don't know what 14,000 translate into, you know, is that like three levels, is that two? So, yeah. I'm, I'm just really confused, so hopefully they could, you know, change that one up a little bit. Um, as I'm, when I look at graph, I, I expect to get some useful information. That's just not really helpful. Chen might be getting ganked though. That would be a little bit useful information. Yeah, first stun, second stun, third stun, easy kill. There was a smoke that goes on. They might even be able to get Kroc now. He's gonna have to pop his BKB. 
down to a 6 second. There's the ulti from the Shadow Demon. He blinks forward to the next creep, and he's going to Mantis style out of it. They still will have vision because of the Necro 3. He really wants to get the stun off. It's going to catch Universe, though. Universe taking tons of damage. There's the ulti from Mirana now changing targets. Mirana may end up going down. Where is Ricky, and where is he doing his damage? He's trying to pick off a couple of heroes, but Shadow Demon's still alive, trying to do as much as possible. Karak is going to survive, though, down to 600 HP. And two heroes dead for the raiding team. Chen's still down, though, and they may be able to get Fishbone as well. A couple more hits, and yes, they will clean up Fishbone, no problem. Wagamom will retreat, they lose also the Slardar. That was a 4 for 1, despite the good initiation for the Radiant team. If you cannot kill a Ricky with your whole team chasing him, then I gotta say the game is... might be a little bit out of reach. And goes through the... I mean, Kuro got chased around, had to pop his BKB, had to use a man towards the end just to survive, but survived it, and he just turned around. The hand of God being extremely useful in that regard, and... Here they come. Ghost is going to pick down this mid tower with relative ease. And the question is whether they're going to keep on pushing. I think they definitely can, or they could play uh, relatively safe, uh, push out all the creep waves, and then go back for the safe third ages. And with that, take the game as well. Yeah, unfortunately for them, the top and the bot lanes are pushed out so much, otherwise, they may have been able to take, take a second tower there. But they will take that tier 1, or the tier 2, and I'm sure the gold graph is going to, or I'm sorry, the EXP graph. Yeah, there's another giant jump down for the dire mm -hmm. team. Surely going to be up leveling their opponents at this point, and be with that tower as well, getting closer to the gold earned. So, despite the gold being very similar, this means that Gosu is very likely to win upcoming team fights because they'll not only have that uh, the gold be equals, but they'll also have the um, carry potential advantage as well as the e level advantage. Yep. So a little bit of item progression here. We see Queen of Pain adding up a acceptor to her. Uh, Ricky, no new item yet, but 3,800. So we could only guess what that might be. And actually, infused. They're coming right back to set up a smoking and probably a decent choice. Trying to catch off a couple ultimates off cooldown. Universe is going to get burst down very quickly. Will he get sent home? Yes, he will. Hand uh. of God plus only persuasion. Pain and Go is going to take the fall, but I think they would take that trade any day if they could help it. And the question is whether Radiant is going to go for a Rax push or are they going to go for Roshan? I think Roshan might not be the worst choice considering they do have Slaughter's minus armor. But again, it seems like Scourge wants to take the fight. Yes, they are going to swap Fishbone. Fishbone just dies before anything happens. And now Ricky using that BKB and a Purge. Reason self disrupt. Are they going to help him out? Looks like they're not. They're going to leave Reason to die as well. And the momentum again swings back. It looked good for a bit for Infuse, but not anymore. Yeah, if you can pick up that Sand King like that, the, the range sheep, I mean, Queen of Pain with a Blink Dagger, Blink Sheep, tons of sheep possible range, so you can start those team fights off and pick off those heroes without them being to, able to react in time. So that was a very smart play there by Bulbul, and that allows him to pick up the Sand King, and then immediately, easily kill the Shadow Demon, who at this point doesn't really have a whole lot of armor, and Ricky's so farmed anyways that he is hitting obscenely hard with that backstab. Yep, and I think at this point of the game, we just see Shadow Demon... Uh, where he becomes to be ineffective, especially if he plays a support. If you don't get a lot of levels on him, uh, he gets just picked off too easily. His spells take too long for actually to actually do any damage. And when you have you know hundreds of damage being done by a, a backstab, Ricky, then yeah, it's not not too helpful. And Wagamama in position. He does realize there's a couple of heroes in the jungle. Two levels of Diffusal Blade still up in Ricky. He's got six charges left. 5k gold, we'll see if he goes for an Abyssal Blade or Butterfly or something like that. I think the Butterfly would be pretty smart. Give him some evasion against that Slaughter as well as the Nature's Prophet, but we'll see what he goes for. His Black King Bar is down to 5 second duration, so that could impact his survivability in upcoming team fights. but I think it's been pretty well demonstrated, that's not a big deal. They're actually going to find him here. They, I think they found him. There's some pings on it, but they're going to go on Bulba instead. The first stun will miss. Bulba blinks back now. Ricky Bar jumping in, pops the BKB, trying to pick off and fuse. Region, he's going to pop the disruption. He will come back out of this, but are they going to be able to find the right one? Nice stun from Sand King. He still has not popped his ulti yet, and Ricky Mar still getting hits off. Not nearly as effective as the previous team fights. The ulti from Bulba comes through, only does damage to the Priest of the Moon. And the ulti from Fishbone finally doing decent damage, but he does get sheep next. They might get Kuroke. He is sheeped as well. Decent damage being dealt out, dealt out by Slaughter and a stun from SK as well. Still not dead yet. He finally goes down. That's going to trade with the Aegis. Queen of Pain may clean this up. Gonna blink pass on Mini and gonna trap cast the poison. And Croc will be pursuing. We'll see if he can clean up here. Goes on Wagamon. He's saving him so hard. Traps himself in. And Croc will get that kill. Bulba is well pursuing. And that is the power of Aegis, man. That would have only been that would have been a Sand King for a Ricky if he did not have that Aegis. Still cheese up on Bulba though, and Gosu will be able to take the spot tower, I think, as a result. Yeah, man. Again, we're seeing I think Roshan's the biggest difference maker in this game. A lot of team fight would have swung differently if the Aegis and Cheese uh, ended up on a different team, but hey, that's why you fight the Roshan, because it gives you that advantage in the fights. And now I think they could even pass a cheese to Kurok and just be like, yo, you're not gonna kill me again. Um, I don't know where Ricky's spending his gold, but he's down to 3k, 3.3k. 
He's sending it to the secret shop. It's gonna be a basher. It's gonna be abysmal blade. And it won't be that abysmal in this game because he actually could get within 100 range instantly and get off a 2 second stun and that's going to be absolutely key picking off uh, heroes such as Mini because you, you generally don't want to get him close or get close to him but with the, you know, the, the basher and everything else it's going to be very easy. Wow, damage being done to the Shadow Demon. Sand King is going to run into the cloud as well. And that was Ricky doing a two hit up on those support heroes. Even on Mini, they just do so much damage. Poison and three. He's hitting for 300 per hit with the Blink Strike following up. It is actually daytime. And Bulba's going to pursue that one. Gets cheap by Wagamama now. But Wagamama in trouble. There's a Necro 3 and the Manta split as well. He's trying to block him off. Doing a great job so far. But he just gets cheap inside the cloud. And this means Wagamama will go down easily. And that's a good game being called for the Radiant Team. They know it's over. But there will be an, an Abyssal Blade on the Ricky at least. And there it is. Second time I've seen it now. We saw it yesterday as well with Art Style. Uh, kind of an interesting game, but it, it is actually a decent Ricky item in the late game once you have your other core items. Yep. Well, I think whatever item Ricky, if you want a Dagon 5, they would have still won, so. Yeah, for sure. I, I would but. still call it Abysmal Blade because it's, it's pretty. Not, not the best item you want to have, but uh, they won the game, so uh, second, second time Chen, guys. Don't play me. Can it go uh, talking a little bit trash, I think? If that, if that was the second time playing Shen, that's pretty amazing yeah. because it <laughs> takes, takes many, many games to get used to microing to train your brain to think about all the creeps separately. So, Well, that was a sweet game. Uh, Infused versus um, It's Gosu. It's Gosu taking the good win. It was looking a little bad in the early game, but I think Infused threw a few many few too many lives away, mm -hmm. and Slaughter ended up 1-8-4 and four despite having decent items there. I think that lost in the game right there. I think they had good team fights. Their early game was pretty strong. Obviously, Nature's Prophet doing great, but they were fighting against the clock. The enemy team had better picks with the hard carry advantage, and that's I think that's why they ended up losing. Yeah, I also didn't like their Shadow Demon play. I mean, not 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 that he played it bad. I just felt like the hero wasn't able to do too much in a single team fight. Um, if you slot him in with a different support, it might be a little bit different. You get a little bit more AOE from a Crystal Maiden, for example, or maybe a freeze fight against a Ricky. Or if you have a Witch Doctor with Death Void, it's, it's hard to say, but I feel like Shadow Demon also didn't contribute too much. He had some disruptions, but overall, um, it was just not enough. And, and Kuroke just got too big. Yeah, he really did. So, Alright, we'll be back for another game in a second, guys. Thank you for joining me, Luminous. Where can they find you? You can find me on YouTube.com, Luminous Inverse, for a lot of Dota 1 and Dota 2 commentary, as well as, you know, random Dota videos. Thank you for having me, Purge. I really appreciate giving me the opportunity to cast. No problem. We'll do this more often. I'm casting every day, yep. so there's plenty of opportunities. So, all right, guys, thanks and stay tuned. I'll be right back in a second. Don't go anywhere.